The first Dalek war, often referred to as the 2150s Dalek invasion of Earth, was the first major Dalek incursion into human space in recorded history. Taking place at the end of the Daleks' expansionist period, from the Daleks' point of view, the majority of the first Dalek war was conducted as part of Project Degravitate, a plot to turn Earth into a huge mobile weapon to use against the rest of the universe. The Daleks' invasion of Earth was foreshadowed in the early Dalek comics, in which the Dalek Emperor targeted Earth after a spree of invasions of other planets and conflicts with other species. The Emperor sent the Black Dalek leader and his fleet to occupy Earth, and they arrived sometime in the 2150s and bombarded Earth with meteorites containing deadly plagues that caused chaos on Earth and paved the way for the Dalek occupation. The Daleks conducted simultaneous attacks on almost all the human colony worlds at the time, so Earth could expect no assistance and soon fell to the Daleks. The population was enslaved forced to work in mines or production plants, and the best and brightest of humanity were surgically altered to become Robomen, brainwashed enforcers for the Daleks whose minds were destroyed while their bodies were puppeteered to serve the Dalek cause. Flora and fauna from Skaro was transported to Earth, such as Varga plants and Slither monsters, and the cities of Earth were left abandoned and crumbling as the few survivors fled underground or to the countryside. Small resistance cells existed all over the planet, but between the Robomen, the Skorosian life and the Daleks themselves, Earth was, for all intents and purposes, completely annexed by the Daleks, and humanity became their slaves. The Daleks rounded up all Earth politicians, celebrities and authority figures and exterminated them, while simultaneously installing propaganda beacons across populated centres to encourage the survivors to come out of hiding and accept Dalek rule. Some major cities like Paris or New York were totally destroyed, while others like London were simply occupied by the Daleks, so that the residents could be rounded up to be sent down the mines. A key Dalek mining operation located in Bedfordshire was the centre of a planned Dalek stratagem that involved installing a massive engine into Earth's crust, allowing it to be flown across the galaxy as a massive Dalek invasion force. The Doctor was involved with the first Dalek war on several occasions. The Sixth Doctor and Perry landed on Earth in 2163, and while they stopped the Black Dalek from releasing a Varga plant virus and defeated the Roboman elite, they could do no more to prevent the invasion because the Doctor knew that the liberation of Earth at the end of the First Dalek War would actually take place in 2167, as his first incarnation landed there with Susan, Ian and Barbara, and helped the local resistance overthrow the Dalek regime, killing the Supreme Dalek's pet Slither monster, aiding the resistance in developing anti-Dalek weapons and tactics, and turning the Robomen against the Daleks in a final revolution to liberate the planet from Dalek tyranny. The First Doctor, Ian and Barbara soon left Earth but Susan was left behind to aid in humanity's reconstruction. Remnants of the Dalek occupation force still littered the planet, and there was a monumental recovery operation in place as humanity slowly re-established its governments and attempted to rebuild after the tragedy of the previous decade. Overall, two-thirds of Earth's population had died, its biosphere and ecosystems had been ravaged, anti-alien xenophobia had become commonplace in the population, and the political and economic geography of the planet had been turned on its head. Formerly prosperous nations that had stood for centuries were now radioactive ash and wastelands, cities that had previously been bustling with life and activity stood as crumbling tombs even decades after the invasion. Many of Earth's surviving colonies were cut off and forced to fend for themselves. New conflicts between different human factions arose, and while much had been lost, many new and unexpected changes to human society occurred as a result of the conflict. For the Daleks, the aftermath of the First Dalek War was a disaster that ended their early expansionist era and briefly halted the steamrolling juggernaut of their war machine from claiming the entirety of the Milky Way galaxy. The revolution on Earth prompted similar outbreaks of resistance on many other worlds, first in the former human colony worlds and then on similar conquered worlds across the galaxy. Realising that they had spread themselves too thin, the Daleks withdrew many of their forces to reinforce their borders, leading to the liberation of many planets. The Black Dalek leader returned to the Emperor in disgrace, and the Emperor decided that more subtle tactics would be needed in future campaigns, giving a small group of time-travelling Daleks the task of finding and exterminating the Doctor, while also paving the way for the Daleks' later use of paid mercenaries like Ogrons or Troopers instead of mind-controlled Robomen. In the late 2180s, there was a second Dalek invasion of Earth, conducted by the Dalek Time Controller, who, with the assistance of the Monk, wanted to transform Earth into a plague planet that could be transported through time and space to infect worlds with any of the viruses from the Amethyst Research Facility. As a result, humanity suffered terrible plagues and a brutal Dalek occupation, while the Monk was offered the chance to plunder all of Earth's artifacts and treasures if he aided the Time Controller with its temporal machinations. However, the Eighth Doctor and Susan were able to put a stop to these plans and liberate 
planet Earth once again, albeit at the cost of the Doctor's companion Lucy Miller and Susan's son, Alex Campbell, the Doctor's great-grandson, who both sacrificed themselves to derail the Time Controller's scheme. And with that, the First Dalek War was finally over. Following the war, humanity went on to expand its influence once again, recontacting many of its old colonies and extending its influence further into the galaxy, creating the first great and bountiful human empire, developing relations with other spacefaring species and forming alliances designed to halt any future attempts by the Daleks to assault human space. This proved to be a wise move, as the Daleks would later attempt to invade human space again during the 25th century, sparking the outbreak of the Second Dalek War. Attention all Daleks, look for these special Doctor Who packs of Weetabix. The Second Dalek War was a war between the Daleks and humanity and its allies that began as an intermittent series of skirmishes between the two sides in the late 25th century, before the official declaration of war was made in 2540. The Second Dalek War came to dominate much of the 26th century for humanity, and marked the beginning of Dalek experimentation with mass-produced time travel capabilities and many other forms of advanced technology such as improved optical systems, refinements to their weaponry, experiments involving different forms of flight, and even some radical ideas for Dalek development that ultimately did not succeed, such as invisibility and adaptions to their casing based on designs sourced from later in their timeline. Following a galactic cold war between humanity and the Daleks that began as early as 2484, the official outbreak of hostilities took place in 2540, when the Daleks attempted to manufacture a war between humanity and the neighbouring Draconian Empire, using the Master and a hired platoon of Ogrons to deceive the two governments, who were already at odds, into attacking each other. The scheme was revealed to the Draconians and humanity by the Third Doctor and Joe Grant, and instead of instigating a war between Earth and Draconia, the Daleks inadvertently cemented the alliance between the two peoples peoples, as they now had a common enemy, the Daleks themselves. Emboldened by this new alliance, human and draconian forces, as well as those of other species allied with humanity like the Silurians and the Alpha Centaurians, pressed the attack against Dalek forces in the Milky Way. Backed into a corner, the Daleks employed several strategies to attempt to tip the balance early in the war. An early attempt to awaken an army of 10,000 Daleks held in suspended animation on Spyrodon was stopped by the Third Doctor, Joe Grant and a group of Thals, as well as several Spyrodons, which set back the plans of the Dalek Supreme Council considerably. The Daleks turned to even more desperate and apocalyptic strategies, such as using planet splitter missiles to obliterate enemy worlds instead of conquering them. Dozens of human colonies fell to the Daleks, with many more like Archeon and Red Sky Lost being destroyed out Right. Hundreds of alien species were wiped out in the Daleks' genocidal campaign. Entire fleets of ships from both sides were annihilated as the conflict became a war of attrition. The Daleks committed innumerable atrocities, but humanity was responsible for its fair share of war crimes as well. The Osterhagen Principle, for example, became a widespread means of denying the Daleks access to strategic worlds by obliterating them with nuclear devices once the population were evacuated. On the planet Bliss, a human scientist committed one of the worst atrocities of the war by creating the Kasabia, a parasitic life form that fed on Dalek Anium and yearned to consume all life in the universe, though thankfully this emergent life form was destroyed by a Dalek commander in the Seventh Doctor. The governments of Earth and her colonies became increasingly more desperate, prioritising powerful defensive measures and using more underhanded tactics to attempt to defeat the Daleks, such as researching biological weapons, attempting to turn Dalek technology against its creators, or hiring mercenaries to go behind enemy lines, paying them a hefty fee for each Dalek eye stalk they could return as proof of a kill. Individuals such as John Bowman and Absalom Dark became legends for their feats of Dalek slaughter, but on the whole morale was low among human forces, particularly since the Draconian Empire began to reduce its anti-Dalek operations, taking advantage of the fact that the Daleks had focused their attention on humanity to enjoy a period of relative prosperity. However, the Dalek conquest of Mazan caused several high-ranking Draconians to worry for the future of their trade routes, causing many to wage private wars against local Dalek forces using their own sector defence fleets. Generally speaking, however, human-Draconian relations worsened as the war went on, with many human fighters expressing bitterness at the Draconian tendency to focus only on the defence of their own borders. Because the war lasted for so long, at least 75 years by most reckonings, it led to the creation of generations of humans who never knew peacetime, referred to as the Dalek Generations. Towards the end of the war, the Daleks had managed to push as far into human space as the solar system, and conducted attacks on human colonies on Mars and Venus, and bombed Earth with biogenic weapons. However, this incursion was repelled at the Battle of Mars, and humanity gradually managed to push the Dalek fleet back, 
The Daleks employed several strategies to attempt to turn the war back to their favour, such as deploying the Death Wheel during Operation Genocide, which was stopped by Absalom Dark, and attempting to invade the Cathedral of Contemplation in a temporal gambit, which was stopped by the 4th and 10th Doctors. During this later phase of the war, command of the majority of Dalek forces had been assigned to the Dalek Inquisitor General, Dalek X, who gave its forces access to advanced Dalek technology from their future, and commanded a huge Dalek battleship, the Exterminator, which it used to lead devastating assaults on human worlds. Dalek X attempted to use the Archeon Threshold to alter time to ensure a Dalek victory in the war, but it was stopped by the Tenth Doctor and a team of anti-Dalek bounty hunters. The Exterminator was destroyed, and Dalek X was left for dead on Harala in the ruins of its destroyed casing by the Doctor, causing the Dalek war machine to fall into disarray. Following the loss of their primary flagship, their most competent battlefield commander, and the Supreme Dalek's temporal research team, the Daleks began to withdraw from the majority of human space to focus on other conflicts across the universe, and the Second Dalek War ultimately fizzled out, according to most accounts. Human governments later undertook a major reconstruction of Earth's intergalactic operations, with more centralised administrations that aimed to strengthen defences against a future Dalek attack and allow for more direct control over human-controlled sectors, with more limitations placed on corporations and local authorities, which later led to a fresh set of problems and conflicts for humanity. The aftermath of the Second Dalek War slowed humanity's expansion into the galaxy, but humanity and its allies did go on to form a more comprehensive defence against the Daleks in the lead-up to the inevitable Third Dalek War. We have never watched Red Dwarf. We are not familiar with its content. We've never watched anything on BBC Two. Exterminate! Exterminate! The Third Dalek War was the third major war waged by the Dalek Empire against humanity, which according to the Time Lords took place at some point following the 27th century. Having failed at an occupation in the First Dalek War and a direct assault during the Second Dalek War, the Daleks instead resorted to biological weapons to weaken human defences, ravaging many planets across the galaxy with deadly diseases using their plague missiles. The outer colonies of the Second Great and Bountiful Human Empire were devastated by pandemics, though at first Earth's governments were unaware that the Daleks were responsible for this. The Marine Space Corps from Earth dispatched a group to Exelon in order to mine the perineum there as this was determined to be the only cure for the vicious diseases that were ravaging human worlds. The Daleks also sent a team to Exelon in order to destroy the perineum supplies and prevent the humans from recovering them. However, a power drain caused by the great city of the Exelons greatly reduced the Daleks' capabilities, forcing them to enter a false alliance with the humans in order to buy them time to replace their weapons with more primitive projectile variants and send a strike team to destroy the city's power draining beacon. However, the Daleks encountered fierce resistance from both the Exelons and the city itself, and with the help of the Third Doctor and Sarah Jane, the humans and Exelons were able to drive the Daleks from the planet, and their ship was then destroyed, leaving the humans free to mine the perineum they needed to cure the plagues. Following the Exelon Gambit, the Daleks engaged in a period of open warfare with humanity, deploying duplicates and gas weapons against human forces in an attempt to weaken their defences, and preying on their patrol ships. However, direct Dalek confrontations with humanity lessened in the following decades due to their empire waging war with other, more powerful threats, such as the Mechanoids, the Sontarans, and of course the Mavellans, meaning that the subsequent smaller conflicts between the Daleks and humanity were not technically classified as part of the Third Dalek War, which is often understood to have officially ended following the Exelon Gambit, despite the fact that hostilities between the Dalek and human empires continued well into at least the 47th century. While other wars between humanity and the Daleks would take place in the future, such as the 40th century Great Dalek War, the Ten Dalek Occupations, the Enemy Alliance Dalek War, the Dalek Invasion of Venus, and the post-time war Paradigm Dalek Invasions, the Third Dalek War is generally considered to be the last of the three main Dalek Wars of humanity's expansionist era and it becomes less clear what the chronological timeline of these wars are from humanity's point of view. By the time of the Great Dalek War, the Dalek Empire was just one of many hostile forces that humanity had to contend with, and from the Daleks' point of view, the prospect of expending thousands of warships attempting another full-scale occupation of human space became less appealing when their empire was faced with more powerful threats like the Eminents, the Cybermen, or the Mavellans. As their ambitions grew, the main Dalek Empire eventually vanished from time and space from humanity's point of view at some point prior to the 51st century, in order to go off and fight the Time War. However, due to their nature as a time-travelling warrior race, this didn't stop the Daleks from waging new wars against humanity in the future, some of which were conducted by the main Dalek Empire and others instigated by other Dalek factions. We must capture these special packs of Weetabix. Now go away before we exterminate you! Exterminate! 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 
Don't forget to click below to subscribe to the Garlic Bumps.